Okay, good morning. I'm Bill Miller. I'm the CEO at XIO Technologies. Um, big data is great. Right? <laughs> the, the emergence of, of big data uh, over the last few years has driven the incredible capabilities to, to derive insights and do some things with AI and machine intelligence that uh, uh, just really interesting topic. Um, but there's some problems with big data and the way it's been instantiated over the last few years. It's a batch technique. So it's, you know, give data scientists a big, uh, large volume, uh, high variety data set, uh, let them run some analytics against it, they'll generate some insights, but it takes a while. So the problem with big data is the insights uh, typically come slow and, and maybe too late for a, kind, a lot of uh, problems. More recently, there's been an emergence of, um, let's call it fast data or streaming data, analytics on streaming data. This has been around for a while, but you've got a pipeline of new data coming in. You can do some analytics against it. The, the problem with fast data analytics is the data set's too small to do some really interesting uh, things against it to generate interesting insights. Um, you know, basically the data set size is what can fit in memory. A lot of this is in memory analytics. You have, you have to fit it in memory. You go outside of memory, these techniques don't work. So the, the math ends up being pretty simple things. Excursions from, uh, from a distribution, for example. Um, what we really need is big, fast data. And you know, the, certainly the industry is, is headed in this direction. So how do we you know, get very large data sets that include the recent data that is just coming in, added to that data set, uh, in, and generate real-time responses, get real-time insights that it can allow us to operationalize big data. So it's this problem of making big data fast that Excelio is targeted at. So we, we think of Excelio as an edge computing solution. Edge computing is getting talked about a lot now. People mean a lot of different things by edge computing. Everything from you know, doing interesting thing with data that comes off the nest on your wall. Uh, obviously, the amount of data you're going to get in that scenario, you, you, you might aggregate it up to a lot of data, but you know, a lot of stuff is, is done in, in lightweight computing. We think about edge computing problems as the big data, high velocity data edge. So the, the attributes we targeted Excelio at are high velocity data, high volumes of data, big data kinds of problems, real-time complex analytics being applied to them to get real-time answers. And when you have that situation, when you have you know, very large, uh, high-rate uh, data creation, you need to do the computing where the data is created. So we don't always think about edge computing as a geographic idea. That's certainly the first thing that comes to mind when people uh, hear edge computing. We think about it wherever the data creation rate that has to be ingested uh, computed against with algorithms that require a pretty large working set of <coughs> big data analytics kinds of problems and real-time responses happen. Sometimes that can even be in the middle of the data center. Uh, you, you just see, don't you see have a lot of places which require 30 gigabytes per second at the edge. I mean, there are places that require 30 gigabytes per second at the edge, and specifically and petabytes of of local storage-ish kind of numbers. Cybersecurity. I can Defense see and intelligence. I can see where we started looking at so, ma massive sources where you need real-time analytics as well. It's easy to, well, not easy, but it's easy to do one or the other, but it's harder to do both at the same time. Exactly. Smart city stuff, I imagine, Whoa. must be a harder than live data. And... Impossible. You know, yeah, yeah. you know, a lot of people talk about these kind of, kinds of edge computing problems in the Internet of Things, smart cities you brought up. I, I think that's true. That's not where we're seeing the near-term use cases for this. Literally, these three markets, these three kind of market areas, are where we're really seeing near-term demand for this kind of very large working set, complex mathematics against it to get real-time insights. Well, there's high-velocity streaming data coming in that's being added to the set. There are a few things outside of these three spaces, but, but this is high, where we're doing a lot science, of work. High science, high performance computing kinds of things, maybe. Yeah, you know, life sciences, because a lot of them are research kinds of things. It's, you know, this, is, this is where you want to operationalize big data. Right. And where do you want to operate? You know, life sciences isn't quite there yet. I can see it in the future, right, where you're actually maybe doing real-time genome analysis on a patient and trying to generate some, you know, something real-time, but it's not today. Internet of Things, not so much today, but these spaces, there are heavy needs for this today, operationalizing big data. A lot of these use cases have this pipeline. 
right? So it's an input data stream or multiple, in, you know, that may be being enhanced with other data streams. It's time series data. It has to be time correlated. You have a working set. Uh, you're doing real-time big data analytics against it. You might also put data out the back end, either all of the data, the raw data, or filtered data that go out to a cloud instance to run machine intelligence against it to train algorithms back, for example. Um, you know, and this is very much like the pipeline you might see in, uh, in a lot of in-memory uh, streaming analytics kinds of use cases today. But the, the big difference is, again, if I'm doing it in memory, I don't have a high volume data set to work against. And a lot of the best big data analytics methods, AI machine learning methods work better if you have a larger, higher variety data set. So these are the kinds of use cases. Um, and I'm gonna go through some examples of things that we're working on now, mostly with partners. Uh, SolarFlare is a company we've done some, uh, uh, some things together with. They have a, a system uh, called Solar Capture System. This is a packet capture system. This will allow you to capture, for example, four by tens or 40 gigabit per second, tap a network, grab all the packets, all of them, store them without loss into a working data set on the back end so that you can run analytics against it as the data stream's coming in. So you gotta, gotta remember, this is a hard problem. I'm running a data stream in, having to store it at very high velocity without any loss. I need to actually access that data set simultaneously to run analytics against it if I'm gonna do re real-time analytics. That is not a problem that an off-the-shelf architecture previously could do. We're gonna talk about how we can. I'm gonna leave that for Gus, but um, packet capture and analytics is, uh, is being used in cybersecurity to look for zero-day threat, anomaly detection, uh, looking for groupings in, in network traffic that, that look unusual. These are you know, algorithms like k-means uh, to look for clusters. Uh, uh, there, it's used in trading surveillance. So you know, this in, in an algorithmic trading world, if something goes wrong, it can go very wrong very fast. So you might wanna watch all the market data as it streams by. You don't have time to actually use message streams. You actually take packet streams, you look for uh, clusters of unusual activity in those streams and you want to react to them fast. You can imagine the kinds of things the intelligence community, the defense community might do with this. Uh, things that, uh, that you know, either we don't know or we can't talk about. But um, you know, that's another partner that we've worked on in the financial market uh, trading analytics space is KX. KX is the leader in time series database. So you know, they have special method of storing data on the back end to capture time series data. Uh, we've actually worked with KX to do some benchmarking. There's a, the Securities Technology Analysis Center stack as an industry uh, gr benchmarking group for the uh, trading surveillance and algorithmic trading uh, world. And uh, we've worked with KX on, on putting a stack M3 benchmark, which is currently they're in their vault. So if, if people are members of the stack group, they can go in and see the benchmark results. Um, we're actually going through the audit with stack now, and we'll, which will allow us to uh, make these results public. Um, the interesting thing about these results, and again, we'll, we'll talk about this, the Excelio system specifically in its architecture, it is a 2U box. It includes compute and storage in the box. Uh, we are outperforming uh, stack benchmarks, the stack M3 benchmarks for systems that take a full rack or a couple of racks to deploy. And when you're trying to capture market data in the pop where the exchange lives, that's expensive real estate. So taking two racks to two U is a pretty good value proposition. Another partner, Ascolta, is a company that provides uh, cybersecurity solutions, mostly to the, uh, to the US government, some other governments, uh, both defense intelligence and civilian agencies. Um, they're using our platform to develop systems to do anomaly detection and rapid response, again, to look for zero day threats. Again, it's a, mostly a packet analysis uh, kind of proposition. Vion is a large systems integrator uh, to the government. Uh, they're doing data fusion, uh, data fusion solutions, mostly for the intelligence community, but, but uh, also for business, real-time business intelligence kinds of things uh, that are deployed in, in defense and government agencies. And Isaac is a company that, that is actually doing predictive and prescriptive analytics based on very large graphs. So this is multiple input data source, 
uh, very large graph analytics, and they're trying to move their analytics from, again, sort of a batch mode to more of a, a mode that can take new data into that graph. So you know, they're having to rebuild a very large graph with each new piece of data coming in. You know, graph builds for them were taking hours to days to build the graph before they could run anal analysis against it. They're trying to get that for a government customer. They also actually have customers in healthcare and uh, uh, utilities, grid network kinds of distribution problems, but, but they're trying to get graph rebuilds with new data to happen in uh, seconds or minutes rather than hours or days. So, that so you, you see Accelero uh, actually being sold by these partners effectively to their various it, customers. In, uh, and we're still, you gotta remember, Accelero is still a very new product. So a lot of these things are still in development. Right. There will be uh, partners of ours that will take Excelio to market with their software, with their solutions, their On services, it, yeah. probably branded by them. Right. There will also be cases where they'll act as integrators, okay. uh, where you know, we'll sell with them or meet in the channel kinds of strategies. So all, all of those are possible. Right. I think as Gavin noted, the, the one thing we're really not gonna put a lot of effort in is to sell the Excelio system as a platform to end users to build their own system on top of. It's mostly gonna be through partners. I think very large enterprise end users in some cases will certainly wanna you know, take the Excelio system and build their own solutions on top of it, but uh, a lot of it is partner to market. The idea there is to give that analytic market the tools they need to have a back-end storage system that can really respond that they don't have the tools to build it. And, and again, this is a com compute plus storage in this case, right? In an integrated package. And a lot of these edge applications, it, it works better to use an appliance-like solution. I mean, you know, they don't have the same kinds of separate scalability problems or scale-out problems that you might find in a big data center. They're, they're looking really? to put some software on an appliance that hook it up to a network or an input message data stream and run analytics there. So that's what this is intended for. Is Accelero NEBS compliant and all that stuff? I mean, does it support? We're working, we have a lot of requests. There are a lot of requests in the government world for certain compliance around it. There will be some things. I think there are some opportunities in telecommunications where there's some things like that that will have to be done. A lot of that stuff is still being mapped out, prioritized, and, and working through. To, to, but we're headed in the direction. And again, often working with a solutions partner, an yeah, integrator yeah. or a software partner in the space to get through those compliance issues. Uh, this is another example from industrial internet of things. Everybody has to have an IoT example today, right? Yeah. Here's my IoT example. We actually, this is early, but there's a, a, a utility company that is doing a, uh, a pretty large scale experiment with smart grid. And you can think about, you know, in, in a world where you have uh, clean energy that is not necessarily uh, like a base load, right? It comes and goes and how do you do grid and generation optimization? And can you outfit your grid with sensors, especially with industrial users? And then it turns out the data collection problem around this and the analytics problem is a pretty big one. So our platform provided, and we're doing this with a partner, um, a, a good uh, opportunity for that. So, you know, these, we threw some logos up here. Um, people we're working with or software we're working with to package solutions under the platform, just to kind of give you a few examples. There are a lot more conversations than this going on. Um, there's a lot of, you know, if you think about these kind of real-time pipelines, um, things like uh, open source software from Apache, like Kafka and Storm, are often integrated into parts of these solutions. But, and, and there's some interesting companies out there that we've um, begun to work with, like Leviex. Leviex has a key value store uh, that is optimized to run in NVMe flash storage. They were working on that independent of us, we kind of found each other and we've done some benchmarking with Leviac. So you can think about a, you know, an in-memory uh, streaming data analytics pipeline that might use Kafka on the front end, maybe Storm to do some data transformation, maybe today using Spark to do in-memory analytics, uh, and then maybe sits on top of Cassandra, right? So you can take, lift that out and stick Leviac in instead of Cassandra, which is optimized to run on a platform and get tremendously better performance out of that kind of a streaming pipeline. 